What's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. Had a good weekend, got to rest your brains, all that good stuff. We do have a shortened week in the stock market this week. It will be closed on Wednesday, so it might be a little bit slow, but hopefully we can get some volume, get some action in the market. Last week was pretty interesting. If you tuned in last week, we did have three on our list. We did have AAL calls, which we were looking at. That honestly just ended up chopping most of the week. Hopefully that will still set up in the future. I still do like AAL for upside. So definitely keep that on watch. It will need to break out of that downtrend though. It was not able to last week. We also had hood puts. So Robin Hood ended up breaking down just a little bit after it rallied a little bit. Actually, we took August puts and that did run down into $22 a share and the puts ran up to 20% and it bounced off support. So we'll need to get under that 22 level. So we are in those currently. So definitely keep hood on watch still for downside it needs to break under that 22 level. We are up on those puts currently. Think about maybe seven or eight percent. We also had SMH puts on watch. We were looking at that big one week divergence. SMH ended up running even more with semiconductor stocks. Nvidia ran, all types of others ran, Broadcom, and SMH had a really good week last week to the upside. So it was not able to break down that $250 level we were looking at, unfortunately. But maybe over the long term, it still can play out that divergence on the RSI. But overall, SMH will need to get under 250 before it does anything significant. It did hold that as support last week. So really, Hood was probably the only one, I would say, that played out somewhat. It really didn't hit my full-on price target yet. We do need to get under that 22 level, like I said, but we are up on those puts currently for August. Just needs a little bit more downside. And I definitely had a mixed week for trading. I got stopped out quite a few times last week. I did not have a great week, unfortunately. So I stopped out here on QQQ puts. I think I took like a scalp, just kept it tight at a 22% loss. Here's our hood puts. I don't think this price is updated because they are up 8%. And for some reason it doubled my order here. I don't know why. So I took some QQQ puts as well on FOMC day, ended up having to stop out of those, jumped into some SPX zero day puts towards the end of the day and actually made this loss back, but I did not alert it because it was SPX zero day and they were about to expire soon, just seemed too risky and they were moving too fast. Then I tried to do SPX calls the day after FOMC, ended up having to stop out of those, came back in, went deeper in the money with SPY on that same day, made 22% on that. So luckily did get a win on that. I only made back a little bit of the loss this day. So I was still red after this day. And I also opened Nvidia puts for July, about a month out. I went in the money to kind of lessen risk a little bit, down just a little bit on that. Also tried a Tesla call scalp on Friday, kept the loss very tight on that one. So very mixed week for me. I closed the week red. It happens. I had a very, very good May, as you can see, all for May. Had a lot of green and a lot of good trades in May. So I was kind of expecting some sort of drawdown coming up soon because I did have a pretty good month prior. But hopefully we can get some of these longer term swings to play out. Here's all my open stuff. Down pretty heavy on Baidu with two months left. Down pretty heavy on QQQ with one month left. Also have AAL three months out. Hood two months out. Nvidia one month out. Hopefully these will come up. I'm not going to open anything new until one of these I can close either for a loss or a gain. So hopefully we'll get some luck this week. Definitely wasn't a good week for me last week, but that comes with the territory. Just thought I would cover some of my trades from last week. Obviously I'll go over the winners and the losers. I don't mind showing. Obviously I'm actively alerting these in the chat and also taking day trades as well, trying to make some money while these swings are open. So hopefully we'll have a better week and yeah. All right, now to the economic calendar. Let's go ahead and get this video started. We are gonna go over the economic calendar real quick. Try to get over this, go over our seasonality and then we'll get into our setups. So for Monday, nothing crazy. It's just gonna be the Empire State Manufacturing Survey. I don't think that's really gonna do anything for the market with a couple of Fed speakers throughout the day. Tuesday is going to be a little bit bigger. We do have retail sales. This can definitely move the market at 8.30 with lots of Fed speakers, unfortunately. I really wish they didn't talk that much, but they do. So we're going to have to deal with that. One at 10 a.m. We got two Fed speakers separately at 1 p.m., another one at 1.20, and another one at 2 o'clock. So lots of Fed speakers on Tuesday, but most importantly, going to be that retail sales. Pay attention to that. Market closed on Wednesday, but the Home Builder Confidence Index does come out. So market is closed here on Wednesday. Thursday, just going to be the usual initial jobless claims. We could probably start paying attention to this because last week we actually did see a pretty gnarly uptick in initial jobless claims, and I saw a couple of news outlets posting about it. So maybe people are starting to pay attention to this a little bit more, and maybe it could move the market but we really need to see like a big extreme 
Otherwise, it's really not going to do much for volatility or really make the market move. And then at 8.30, you could probably pay attention to the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Survey. This can move the market, but it really just depends. It has to be an extreme reading. And then on Friday, I would say this is probably going to be number two for the most important besides retail sales. So this is going to be the U.S. services PMI and also U.S. manufacturing PMI and also existing home sales at 10. So our PMIs are probably going to be number two, most important. Number one, obviously going to be retail sales. So that's for the economic calendar. Relatively quiet. No really big ones this week. I guess you can call retail sales big. And then our PMIs on Friday usually pretty big they can move the market definitely mid-session all right now on to the seasonality we'll go over the 20-year data set and we'll go over the 10-year data set real quick you can see we have winning trades to the short side so this is back testing shorts if you went short the last 20 years for this period you would have won 50 percent of the time with a summarized profit at six percent but you can see the average move here is downside historically obviously last week was supposed to be historically bearish as well we did not follow that so market has not been following any bearish seasonality, really. I don't even think we really got a May dip like we usually see. And we really haven't seen that June dip either quite yet. But maybe we could still see this play out. I definitely feel like the market is probably due for some type of little pullback. So when it comes to pullbacks in the market, obviously, I really don't expect a crash in the market. There's no volatility signals saying the market's going to crash yet. There's not really any crazy macro signals just yet. But when I do expect a pullback, I usually look for anywhere from 1% to 2% just a little pullback nothing crazy and really it just depends on the levels right like i can project lower than a one or two percent downside as long as you know the levels are flushing we're giving up the moving averages and stuff like that right now we are not doing that so i really can't expect much other than just a little pullback that would be healthy for the market and you can see historically this pullback usually goes from june 8th down to the 27th or so so yeah about a 50 50 here for the last 20 years if you went short you would have won 50 percent of the time but came out positive. So that means the downside really made up for any losers and you did come out positive if you went short this period the last 20 years. And here's the more recent years. We'll go over the 10 year. So this is the last 10 years of data. Same thing as the 20 year. You only have winning trades at 50% with a negative summarized profit. Actually, if you went short, which makes sense because this period really kind of just chopped the last 10 years if you kind of added them all together. So you don't really have a big up thrust and you don't really have a big downside move here. So it makes sense that this summarized profit is probably negative and your winning trades are still only at 50%. So the 20 year actually came out positive. If you went short, this one did not. So we're not really seeing any big upside historically. And we're not really seeing any big downside either. We do have a little flush here on the 20 year, but nothing on the 10 year. So take that how you will. All right, let's go ahead and get into our setups. So our first one here, we're looking at CLF. And obviously as the weeks go by and you have the index is hitting all time highs, it's usually getting a little bit harder week by week to even find discounted names like this or things near support. I try to find things that are going to have a little bit less drawdown risk. So you're not like chasing into the highs you're maybe getting a good discount and trying to find like some type of bounce. Even if it's still in momentum, I would like to see something pull back into the moving averages before I'm kind of looking for a setup. I would want to see a pullback like this while still holding higher lows. I really don't kind of trade breakouts like this. Like if you were to long over this 2142 for this little breakout bar, I don't do those type of setups anymore. It's just really easy to get rug pulled. So I try to find discounts in the market. And obviously the past couple of weeks, it's been a little bit harder if you're not chasing NVIDIA, semiconductors, chasing things that are already way up and you got things that are kind of near support, kind of chopping out and not really getting any momentum. Everybody's chasing the winners right now. So it's a little bit more difficult, but if you kind of buy time and, you know, show a little bit of patience these setups can play out and really all year we've had a really good week by week trade ideas list and i feel like most of the time we see at least two or three winners on our list in the past couple of weeks we've only had maybe one out of the three play out and maybe that's because people are just chasing the winners and the setups that we're finding are just not finding momentum off the lows or new supports because usually i'm trying to find stuff like this like aal last week it's near support it's very oversold same with clf here it's at the lows. We're at one week demand. This is a drop base rally demand zone. And it looks pretty good to buy the dip. And on the one day here, you can see the RSI is all the way in the lower 20s here. You do have the MACD negative. So that's one downside about this. But like I said in the past, MACDs are a little bit lagged. So you kind of just want to go off price. And right now we're at support. We're at demand. 
and we have an oversold RSI. So CLF, I'm looking at calls. Obviously, I probably will need to clear the moving averages. You can see it's a very clear downtrend for the one day 921 EMA cloud. And when the cloud is red like this, that means it is in a downtrend. So it's been rejecting off of that very well. Now we're kind of a little bit more extended. It has been selling all the way from April. So maybe it will be due for some type of dead cap bounce. Hopefully we can see that. And then max upside, I can see for right now, probably just up to 16 50 and that's this previous structure low right here so clf i'm looking at calls maybe august minimum something you can set and forget and maybe it does have limited drawdown risk because it is already so low and very oversold and right now since you don't have like a crazy reversal signal yet buying time will kind of give it time to deal with any chop or if it's not ready yet and needs a little bit more time to accumulate, you can deal with that. So that's for CLF. Be patient. Looking at this one week demand, looking pretty discounted and nice. All right, number two, we're going over J and J. This is Johnson and Johnson. This is a pretty good name to trade if you can find a good price. I really like playing bounce plays on this. It's been a while since I have, but this thing can really run off the lows, especially after it's been oversold. It's kind of like a classic value type trade. People buy it for the dividend and really it kind of just has a mind of its own. You don't really see it like following the S&P that much or really following healthcare all that accurately as a sector. It kind of does have a mind of its own. And right now it is trading near the lows here. This is a pretty nice drop base rally demand zone. You can see it bounced right here. So it was a rally. It pulls back in, holds the support, nice gap up here, almost a 5% day, runs some more, pulls back into it again right here, short term bounce now just kind of accumulating off of it. But right now it is not ready yet. Obviously you will need to get a breakout first. So definitely keep that on watch. This is not confirmed yet, but I really do like this value area here off demand. Obviously you just wanna see that breakout and that could give you a really nice setup, head back up to 150 and so on and so forth. So that's for J&J. &J. If you want, just draw this trend line, right click it, hit add alert on trend line and we'll name it breakout. Simple as that, hit create. And then when it's ready and breaking out, you will get an alert on trading view. So it's as simple as that right now, trending under the 921 cloud, trending under your 50, trending under your 200 SMA, you do have a negative MACD signal. RSI is kind of stuck in the middle. There's no really like oversold signal or anything yet. So that's why you want to wait for it to break out because you kind of do have a lot of things going against you here. But we are keeping an eye on this value area and this demand since it kind of did hold up pretty well in the past. And right now, like I said, it's very hard to find stuff at support kind of near lows because everything's kind of running with the indexes. And right now I feel like J&J, &J, CLF, AAL, stuff like that near the lows could be a nice little discount play if they want to play catch up and try to get back up with the market as a whole. So that's for J&J. &J. I'm looking at calls, but it does need to break out of this downtrend line. Like I said, right click it, hit create alert, and it will signal you when it gets outside. All right. And last but not least, I do want some type of downside play on watch in case the market does want to pull back. Market looks a little bit overbought. And as well, this little eBay setup is very clean. Obviously, you have a test one a test two, basically a test three bounce and a test four bounce attempt right here. Now trying to break that down. So I am looking at puts on this. Obviously it's very simple with trend line plays like this. If it does like fake out and go back above the trend line, starts closing back over, that's your invalidation point. And really that wouldn't be too bad if this turned into a loss. You just want to make sure it's closing inside before stopping out. If it starts closing inside and reclaiming the trend, that is your signal to get out. So that's what I like about trend line plays. They're pretty simple. If it goes back within the trend, otherwise this can definitely flush and you are seeing some type of shift here. You also do have a closing back under 52.93. Probably just round that up to $53, which is this almost multi top resistance here. Got a rejection here, one here, one here, another one here, and another one here before a little breakout attempt didn't last very long, pull back in and it's kind of been chopping. So the fact that it is back under that 53, also under the trend line gives me pretty good confidence we can start heading back down to the structured low maybe and just keep it simple as that you could probably even round this up to your 50 since 50 dollars will probably be a psychological level even though it's not really a clear support or resistance here in the past this 50 dollars level will likely try to act as support you probably will try to see some buyers there show up at 50 dollars even another thing it probably will need to do start closing under this 50 SMA, which is a bounce level here. You can see this is the 50, also bounced off the 50 right here. And it did close under the 921 cloud. So here's your nine, your 21, 
it closed under that. This is your 50 right under that. It doesn't need to close under that. If it loses that, it could definitely get back down to 50 and the 4950 area, which is the structure low. You also have negative MACD, so that's a good sign. Don't really have a momentum indicator here pointing positive. You got trend line breaking, close back under resistance. So pretty good signals. Like I said, just needs to get under the 50 SMA and that could be a pretty good shot back down to 50. So that's for eBay, kind of a simple trend line break play. It's not really that sophisticated or anything. It's just breaking the trend back under resistance, looking pretty good for downside. All right, and on to the indexes. We'll go over the SPY first as usual. Last week, we were really just looking at 533 as the support because that was this resistance and also a back test and look how it consolidated off of it last week just really nice and i just mentioned you could probably look at call scalps nothing crazy because i really wasn't expecting this big push up honestly up into the 540s or it could really only project up to the 537 which is the previous week high so this was last week's max projection level and then this was the support i mentioned you'd probably want to watch and you could scalp off of and it worked pretty good it worked good monday worked good Tuesday. And then once we broke over the 537, obviously that introduced higher levels and we've kind of been chopping ever since we gapped up. So the 533 worked really nice. Also ended up hitting that 537 max upside PT I had at the end of the day Tuesday here. And that's really all I could go off of. Now for this week, we do have another FIB extension. So you had the 1.272 here, and then you have the 1.618 here, which acted as really nice resistance. Rejected here, big rejection candle here, kind of a rejection of the general area right here. So that's kind of your new resistance point and your new support is very simple, the structure low right here. So just watch 540 to 539.60s as a structure low. If that breaks, you do start entering the gap. So you got about four points here in terms of a trading range. You got 539 to 543s. So nothing crazy, just definitely mark that low. And then your FIB extension should just come from what we drew last week. So you go from this high, here I'll even get rid of everything again and show you. It's really simple. Hit your FIB tool, start from this high, go down to this low, and there you go. So this was our support last week at the 533s. This is the new resistance and also resistance last week at the 1.618. You do have to double click, make sure you're hitting the 1.272, check that one, and then check a 1.618 as well. And that's your level. And then manually, you just wanna come in, draw your gap, draw your structure low from last week. Here's your structure low from last week. And then here's your gap that is unfilled. And simple as that. So that's your trading range, your structure low, your new resistance, and your gap. And really I can't project anything right now. I mean, it's too close to resistance for me to want to go long and there's really no reversal signal for puts yet. If you do want to watch for puts, you could definitely do that. If it gets back up here, watch the general area, look for put scalps. I don't really see a reason yet to enter a put swing unless you want to buy a lot of time. August expiration minimum. You do have some signs of VIX holding up, so that's good. VIX is holding the lows. People are starting to hedge a little bit. It's refusing to give up the 1182 and overall volatility is holding up relatively well despite it being so low. But yeah, otherwise you're gonna be probably waiting for a dip into you know, the structure lows, look for scalps off of that, or you can look for scalps off of this. And that's about it. All right, and on to QQQ. So last week we had 460.50s to 460 as the zone. It did not pull into that. So we did not get a pull in to scalp off of that, unfortunately. I really would like to have seen a direct back test here, but it just missed it basically by a dollar, maybe 80 cents. So here was last week, here was Monday. It only got to 460, 140s or so. So it missed our scalp range, unfortunately. SPY tested that 533 directly as we wanted to see. QQQ did not get into that range. I mean, you could have just marked the structure low and maybe scalped it like that, like when it pulled in here on Tuesday. But overall, we really wanted to see it into the lower 460 area in order to buy the dip and see some upside. But I mean, overall, it did hold over that. So maybe that the fact that it did hold over that set it up for this big move. In terms of levels, I don't really have anything specific for you this week on QQQ because it's kind of just in a big uptrend. Obviously, it did pull into the 921 combo right here on Tuesday, and that's really about it. It didn't pull into our level. Obviously, I really would have liked to see that direct test at 460s. But for this week, for a dip buy, I probably will want to see down to 471.75, that 1.618 extension area this so i'd like to see like a dip into this i would definitely be willing to scalp off of that otherwise it's just in a melt-up pattern can't really do much with this obviously you can just kind of scalp off the moving averages use the 921 combo and the 50 sma on the 15 minute time frame use that as support if you must but 
Really, I don't like anything here on QQQ for upside at the moment. It's just too overbought for me personally. Obviously, there's plenty of people that will chase momentum and buy into the highs. I'm just not one of them. And unfortunately, that costs me money sometimes, but I'd rather buy the dips and see direct back tests like we wanted to see last week down here. Another thing you can watch, you can draw a trend line just like this for short term. You just want to make sure that holds if that ends up giving up. Obviously, flushing like this and changing the momentum, that can definitely flush back down. And you can mark this little structure low here. So you can look for a dip buy at the 474. You also have the gap support low, which kind of meets with the 1.618 extension at the 471s. So your 471s and that 474 are two key levels you want to watch for a dip buy if we can get down there. Otherwise, just watch this little uptrend on the short term. It's been holding the past three sessions. So you definitely want to watch that. Go ahead and mark this. Get a test one, a test two. Maybe it can come back down for a test three. Try to hold it up overall we'll need to break in order to go down so just go ahead and watch that and mark that structure low at the 474 and then your gap support low you could even mark this since this was a little resistance point here it rejected right there also had a short-term stall out right here so if it falls back under 478.39 that could flush back down under the trend line as well so go ahead and mark that as well so basically you have short-term everything short-term trend line you have a little short-term 478 rejection. You got a structure low short term here at 474 and then your gap structure low and the 1.618. And the reason why you want to go down to the shorter term time frames right now is just because it's in that melt up pattern. And I really don't see anything on the one day like a big support or a big resistance on the higher time frame. So you kind of do have to zoom out here for now until something changes. You need to see a change of character, change of behavior in the market. All right, and on to the VIX. As always, this is the last part of our video and the last part of our analysis. Analysis. I feel that volatility is pretty important to go over especially when it gets low like this it definitely sends you caution signals you want to be a little bit careful and the saying that comes to mind is when the VIX is high it's time to buy when the VIX is low take it slow so kind of keep that quote in your mind right now the VIX is low so you might want to take it a little bit slow I definitely have been trading smaller very small position sizes and even with the smaller position sizing last week I still had a pretty decent red week. So obviously smaller position sizes won't save you from red days or anything. If you're gonna have a red day or a red week, it's just gonna come. It's basically unavoidable. You're gonna run into a cold streak at some point. If you go smaller and you have that cold streak, it won't be as bad if you were trading smaller. You know, a couple contracts here, maybe one contract here, etc. Kind of keeping your losses within the hundred dollar range. $200 range, something like that. That's feasible. You can come back from that. Now, if you're going into the thousands and it's eating into 20% of your account, that is not good. So yeah, when the VIX is high, it's time to buy. When the VIX is low, take it slow. So for last week, we were just focused on the 1237, obviously, and the 1182 as usual. That has been the focus for this week when we reached it. And also was the focus for last week when we pretty much went down into it and closed here on Friday at the lower 12s. So I did mention that the VIX looked pretty good to kind of pop back up short term. It did do that on Monday. It was actually up 4%, ran up a little bit more on Tuesday. And then when the FOMC came out, obviously, usually when the FOMC comes out, unless it's very hawkish and the market is selling off aggressively, you're going to see a big downside candle in volatility and volatility is going to get crushed. So we got that on Wednesday, very big red bar down. But overall, look what held up, held up the 1182 and popped again on Friday. So Friday actually ran all the way from lower 12s all the way up to 1367 almost, which 1367 has been our main volatility signal point that we want to see get over in order for the market to sell off. So once it gets over that 1367 to 14 area, we did see volatility ramp up aggressively and then basically hits a stone when it runs into 15. Also have a pretty big rejection level around the 15 area at the 200 SMA, which was this big rejection point right here towards the end of May. So it's the same thing as last week. I don't really have anything changed here. This this was last Friday's close at the lower 12s. We still are at 12.65. So it's holding up pretty good. We are not flushing just yet. And until this starts flushing that, I really feel like volatility can pop back up and the market probably will have a little bit of a pullback. And that's what makes it hard because even though VIX is not flushing the lows here and heading lower, the market still is able to make new 52 week highs and new all time highs. So obviously that 11.82 to lower 12s is a very good hedge point because every time we get there, 
you see the VIX ramp up, and that's likely because of SPX options. SPX options is basically what moves the VIX. So every time we get to this area, there's obviously a ramp up in SPX puts because every time it gets down here, it pops back higher. So look, it just refuses to give up this zone. I mean, the lower 11s and the lower 12s, it just keeps bouncing off of that. It did it last week too, gapped up right here. But really without that 1367 break and the VIX getting over 14 area and so on and so forth, like up here, you're probably not gonna really see a big downside move in the market because we really didn't see that last week at all. We really didn't get a big pullback or anything. Despite this little VIX pop here, it really didn't do anything. But when you start getting over this 1367 and getting up here, you definitely see some big swings in the market. So we will definitely want to see that. I would like to see that. Getting VIX back over 1367, getting it back over 14, so on and so forth. Probably even mark this as well, that 1487. But honestly, that meets right with the one day 200 SMA. So I don't need to draw that. As you can see right here, this is the 200 SMA, these dots. So for VIX, until it breaks under this 1182, it continues to show me that it can pop back up. And that makes me cautious in the market. Keep missing out. On upside, so be it. I would like to see it capitulate and head below 1182. Then maybe I'll feel a little bit better about the market going higher and a little bit less worried about a pullback. But right now it is holding up the lows. Like I said, this is a multi-bottom low, 1237, also a multi-bottom low, as you see. So VIX looks good to keep holding and popping back up. Obviously, when you add the moving averages, we haven't closed over the one day 921 cloud so closed under it it was able to close over it last week here but then we ran into the one day 200 sma so overall i mean eventually it will need to get over all the moving averages to see a really big volatility spike as you see right here i could even get rid of the drawing so it's cleaner so here was when the vix got over the 921 cloud got over the 50 sma got over the 200 sma and ripped off of the 200 sma and the 921 cloud right here these two big candles was from that back test and hold and it just ramped up aggressively right now we have a very solid brick wall the 200 sma up here and we do have a short-term resistance here at the 921 cloud as it's been doing it rejected here it rejected here short-term rejection here fell back under here and it keeps closing under the 921 cloud. I don't see a single close over the 921 cloud May 30th, which is this bar right here. This closed under, this closed under, closed under, closed under, and you can see every single close is below the 921 cloud. So we will need to get over that 921 cloud to ramp back up. If it closes over that, that makes me feel more confident for a move up on the VIX. Definitely just keep watching this 1237. Use it for day trading signals if you have to. Obviously, when the VIX is ramping up like this, you wanna be careful in short-term calls. When it's going down, aggressively like this you want to be very careful about short-term puts you do want the vix matching up to your spy trading so if you're gonna go long you want to see volatility trending lower if you want to go short try to scout puts you want to see volatility going higher and ramping up like this and right now it's holding pretty good so as long as it keeps holding this up and trying to go back higher i'm definitely remaining skeptical in the market for longs so i'm leaning a little bit more for a pullback over the next couple weeks but that's all i got for you guys make sure you like comment and subscribe i love you i'm gonna go ahead and get this chopped up sent out all that good stuff hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you had a better trading week than i did last week and hopefully we'll have a good one this week i love you and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.